Let's look at the nature of acids and bases and think about what defines them. Here are some household acids and bases and we can look at lemons and know they're sour and, and we could look at baking soda and know that it's uh, bitter and we could look at pop and tomatoes and probably know they're slightly acidic but what are the theories that defines the nature of these acids and bases? Let's start with the simplest of theories, and that's called an operational or an empirical theory. Those are the theories that just look at the empirical or observational behaviors of acids and bases. So probably from junior high, you recall some of these. We know that acids are electrolytes and bases are electrolytes, which of course means they both conduct electricity. We know there's some kind of dissociation into ions, which allows for that. We know that acids turn both red and blue litmus paper red, and that bases turn both red and blue litmus paper blue. We also know that acids have a pH of less than 7, bases a pH of greater than 7, that if we could taste them in the lab, that acids would taste sour, and that bases would taste bitter. Acids neutralize bases, and bases neutralize acids, and finally, bases are slippery. These are all observational or operational empirical observations that define an acid and a base. But how about now, how do we define an acid and a base with respect to how it behaves on a chemical ionic level? So re recall the Arrhenius theory. The Arrhenius theory that we've looked at says that acids ionize to produce hydrogen ion. This is not an empirical property because we cannot see it, but we're proposing that they must produce hydrogen ions. And Arrhenius also said that bases probably produce hydroxide ions. So we're going to look at Arrhenius' theory and realize that it's not quite good enough to explain some strange evidence. So I'm going to propose a new theory. We're going to modify the Arrhenius theory a little bit. And we're going to look at how an acid behaves when it reacts with water and how a base behaves when it reacts with water. So let's look at the first one, when an acid reacts with water. When an acid reacts with water, we're going to call an acid HA. HA is going to be uh, any acid that we want to talk about. Okay? It's going to a general formula for an acid. Acids contain hydrogen and the A represents the fact that it is an acid. So this is any acid. Just the general formula. So if we put any acid in water, we, were, we will produce hydrogen ions, but those hydrogen ions, as Arrhenius predicted, will bond with uh, H2O to make a new type of ion that probably exists in solution more than hydrogen ion by itself, and that is called H3O+. It is a hydrated water molecule, sorry, a protonated water molecule, and its name is called the hydronium ion. Okay, you could draw the Lewis structure if you want to practice. I think we did this when we were doing the bonding unit. So the hydronium ion is produced. Well, what else would be produced? Let's take a look at our reactants. If we had H2O and we're making H3O+, that means the hydrogen from the acid must have been uh, brought forward to the H2O molecule, forming hydronium ion. That leaves the A by itself. But when I take the hydrogen off of HA, I've just lost a positively charged proton, leaving the A one negative. So when you remove a hydrogen from an acid, the remaining substance is going to get one more negative. Conversely, on the other hand, for H2O, when I added a hydrogen to H2O, the molecule became one more positive. So consider that when you are writing the modified Arrhenius equation, or an acid. Now bases uh, will form hydroxide ion, like Arrhenius said, but it's again, we're going to modify that a little bit to show the reaction of a base with water. So any old base, the general formula for a base is going to be B for base and then minus because it's going to have the ability to accept a hydrogen. So B minus is a general formula for any base. And the modified Arrhenius equation will react that base with water Okay, and then what we get is, is we must get hydroxide because hydroxide defines the base. So if I get hydroxide ion, then you can see H2O must have lost a hydrogen, and that hydrogen, of course, is going to go on to the B. 
so we make HB as our other product. Remember, when you add a hydrogen, it becomes one less negative or one more positive, so HB doesn't have a negative charge. Please keep in mind that these bases that I'm showing you do not contain hydroxide, because if they did contain hydroxide, we already know they are a base. Anytime you get a hydroxide-containing base, you just associate it. For example, if I had an AOH, I'm not going to react that with water. Hydroxide is already present. I'm just going to show the dissociation of Na plus and OH minus. You'll notice that sometimes I'm drawing double arrows and single arrows. Um, the equilibrium arrows are a better uh, expression of what is occurring, but I will be explaining how you choose which type of arrow in a future vodcast. For now, you can just place them both as double arrows and uh, we'll learn how that works a little bit later. All right, so our next vodcast is going to show some examples of applying this modified Arrhenius definition of acids and bases.